This video is dedicated to the late Robert Wirtpool Brock, creator of Presentable Liberty. May he forever rest in peace. It's been almost a decade since its original release, but Presentable Liberty still remains one of those indie horror games that, when you play it, leaves a burning scar in your mind. Unlike modern games that try to create an infinitely replayable experience, Presentable Liberty is a game that you can only truly experience once, like DDLC my eyes deceive or other similar horror games with that being said if you have not played or seen this game i recommend that you download it and play it before watching this video it should also go without saying that certain sensitive topics relating to this game and real life are discussed in this video watch at your own discretion with the prologue out of the way, we can ask ourselves how this incredibly simple, yet intricate indie horror game broke the hearts of millions of people. As soon as the game begins, you're introduced to the only area you will be in for 99% of the entire game. In this singular grey room, which looks like a prison cell, you have a twin-sized cot, a small barred window, and a ticking clock. That is it. That is all you have to start your experience with. The only exit is a single metal door with bars covering a tiny slit that lets you peer into the hallway on the other side. Shortly after the game begins, a brown letter is slid under the door by an unknown person. When you open the letter, you see that it is from your good friend, Salvador the Traveler. It is confirmed from this letter that we are, indeed, locked away in a prison cell. He informs you that he will be going on a journey soon. He still writes to you though, and in his next letter, he provides you with a little spider friend to keep you company in your lonely cell. Letters like these are your only connection and source of information to the outside world. No one comes to speak to you, no one interacts with you in any way. For now, it is just you and the letters. After Sal gives you your little bug friend, a yellowish envelope slides underneath the door into your cell. It is here where we're introduced to a character named Dr. Money. In this letter, he informs us that we have been selected to join an exclusive program for inmates all over the country. In his following letters, he explains how a terrible virus has infected 98% of the world, with the remaining 2% being people who were locked away from society before the outbreak. You are one of them. Dr. Money also issues you a happy buddy to help fight any suicidal and depressing thoughts that may occur during your solitary confinement. We are then introduced to the third character after a blue envelope slides underneath the door. This new person, your own personal happy buddy, gifts you with five confetti poppers to keep you happy. He also gifts you with a portable gaming device and a game to keep you entertained. It is his job to keep you alive and happy, after all. After you have been introduced to these characters, the true story of the game begins to slowly reveal itself to you. It is through these letters that you learn the nature and state of the world, and what is really going on behind the scenes. Salvador describes his journey to you, saying that he is heading to the far east with no clear goal in mind. He gives you another gift, a painting for your bland prison cell, which hints at how close you two actually were before you were locked away. Your happy friend continues to send you letters, encouraging you to be happy and to keep a song in your heart always, for you are smart and kind and important. The letter after this is from Dr. Money. In this letter, it addresses your happy buddy, Mr. Smiley, and states that he has not met his happiness quote yet, and that if he wishes to see his daughters again, he has to lower the suicide rates in prison. Already, we begin to see who is in charge, who is pulling the strings, and who is the one that has imprisoned us. Dr. Money then sends you an apology letter, stating that the previous letter was a mistake and that Mr. Smiley does truly care about you. Mr. Smiley sends you more letters after this, intensifying the happiness of them. Finally, the final letter of the day arrives. It is from Salvador, and he wishes you a good night in your prison cell. With nighttime setting in and nothing else to do, we lay down on the bed and fall asleep, leading us into day two. 
We begin the new day with a gift from Mr. Smiley, which is a new game for our portable entertainment device. Not long after this generous gift, he also sends you a smiley poster with blood splatter on it in the bottom left corner, which is another hint of what is truly happening behind the scenes. After this gift, however, we are introduced to the fourth and final character of this game, whose name is Charlotte. She explains that although you don't know her, that you two are the last people left in town who are not infected with the virus. She explains that she owns a pastry shop not far from your cell, and that she would appreciate it if you could come visit her and sit down for a cup of tea. However, you can't leave your cell. You can't even respond to her to let her know you can't leave. You can only read the letters she sends you. In between the letters that are sent to you, no matter how badly you want to respond, you can only play the games on your portable entertainment device. Throughout the day, through multiple letters, Mr. Smiley begins to ask, almost beg, you to remain happy, and not to report him, as he knows that if you don't, Dr. Money won't give him his daughters back. He apologizes for not being able to get you another game, as they are extremely expensive. You're quickly distracted from Mr. Smiley, however, when Salvador resumes his messages and sends you the leg of a table that he is working on building for you. This act of generosity by Salvador shows just how deep his friendship is with you, and he is willing to put in effort and sweat in the hand building and shipping a table to you. The final letter of the day is from Charlotte this time, and she wishes you a nice sleep. And with that, day two ends and day three begins. Day three begins almost identically to day two, as your first letter is a gift from Mr. Smiley. It is a third game that he bought with the last of his money for your handheld device. He reminds you to please, for the love of all that is holy, to stay happy as they are always watching. After checking out the new game that Mr. Smiley bought for you for a little bit, Charlotte sends more letters to you. She talks about how so many people are choking to death from the virus, and that she can see it happening from her pastry shop window. She also mentions how Dr. Money is working on an antidote for the virus, but that she doesn't trust him. Throughout the day, you receive more gifts from your pen pals. Salvador sends you the second leg of the table, then Charlotte gives you a poster that she found in her attic. Charlotte also mentions how Dr. Money is now selling an antidote for the virus to the people, but that he is doing so at a ludicrous price. After this, Salvador gives you the third leg of the table and announces that he has started his journey home. He states that he will most likely arrive around tomorrow morning and is looking forward to seeing some familiar faces. He does not know of what the virus has done to his beloved town. Your conversation with Charlotte continues. She mentions that Dr. Money has lowered the price of the antidote, but that apparently, when people take it, it causes various vital organs to fail. She then states how lonely it is not being able to speak with anyone. She questions whether you're still even alive, but you have no way to tell her otherwise. The night ends with a conversation with your good friend Salvador. He sends you not only the final leg of your table, but also the tabletop as well. This table represents the bond that you and Salvador have with one another and that you two are deeply intertwined. The sun sets on the hidden horizon outside your cell, and day four officially begins. Unfortunately, day four does not begin like the previous two. Your first letter is from Salvador as he re-enters his hometown and asks, where is everyone? He is just now beginning to realize what has happened while he was away. His letter ceased for a bit, and a conversation with Mr. Smiley picks up. In his letters, he states that more and more prisoners are ending their lives. However, he sold his house, his food, and one of his lungs to buy another game for you to keep you alive and happy. He must in order to see his beloved daughters again. Salvador sends you another letter. He asks if you knew of everything that has occurred, the virus, the blood, the death. Dr. Money appears once again, and in his letter, we actually begin to learn the terrible truth behind everything. He apologizes for this virus he has created, 
the virus that he has unleashed upon the world. The virus that killed 98% of the human population. The virus that he purposely engineered and released so that he could sell an expensive, life-saving antidote to become the richest man on earth. However, to make it up to you, this monster gives you a poster of money. To him, the situation is rectified. Salvador resumes his conversation with you. However, the information in his letter only makes this dire situation even worse. He explains that since the antidote causes people's organs to fail, there is a huge black market for working organs. And this market is run by none other than Dr. Money himself. However, Salvador says that even if you buy the working organs and have them put into you, you'll still die a couple hours later. No matter what, whether you buy the antidote or buy the organs, you still end up dead and Dr. Money still ends up with your money. It is then that Charlotte contacts you. She says that she found an old gramophone, and though she is unsure that you will even hear it, she winds it up, turns the volume up extra loud, and lets the music flow out. This beautiful music fills the empty void with a cacophony of wonderful sounds, instilling a little bit of hope to those who hear it. Once the song ends, she contacts you again, wondering if she should even play the music again. She has begun to believe that she is truly alone. She doesn't want to look outside her window, afraid of the horrific sights of the deceased laid out upon the streets. She believes that everyone is dead. She says that the city lights are going out, and the only stable ones are coming from your prison. She then gives you a deadline. One more day. Tomorrow evening. Until then, she says you must come to her. She says that if you do not, then she is afraid that there is no place left for her in this world. She ends your conversation by gifting you a cake that she has baked for you. This cake she baked for you in the darkest of days when she wasn't even sure you existed. She truly cared about you and really, really wished to simply know if you were even still alive. Salvador sends you the next letters, saying that he heard the music and tried to head for the source, but that it was over before he could get there. He then says that he will come to visit you tomorrow, and for now, to get some rest. The final letters of the day come from Mr. Smiley. He asks if you are still happy and that you should get some sleep, because tomorrow, it will all end. Unable to do anything else, you lay down on your bed, and the final day falls upon you. Day 5 begins with letters from Mr. Smiley. At this point, he breaks his character and explains to you what was truly happening. Dr. Money had kidnapped his daughters and told him that they would be okay so long as he kept you happy. However, Dr. Money lied to him. His daughters were dead. They had succumbed to the virus two days prior. He never got to say goodbye to them. But to you, though, he will. He states that he has given up hope and that he has signed the way the rest of his organs. However, he gifts you one final game with the money that he was given for his organs. He encourages you not to give up hope, as he has. His final letter to you is a simple goodbye. Mr. Smiley, the father of two beautiful girls, was robbed of them. They were killed by a virus created by Dr. Money, someone who cannot be considered human to make him rich. And now, the greedy Dr. Money had not only taken his daughter's lives, but his life as well. He had taken everything from him. This wretched beast then contacts you, asking you to stay happy despite the fact that your happy buddy has ceased contact. His reasoning is because you are worth every penny. To this abomination, a single penny is worth more than a human life. Letters from Salvador arrive, announcing that he is close to your prison and that although the streets are empty and that he might be riding to a dead man, he wasn't giving up hope. Dr. Money interrupts your conversation with him, asking you to ignore Salvador's letter from here on out. He reminds you that you are a prisoner 
and that you are being protected from the horrors of the outside world. He says that Salvador freeing you is wrong and that you need to end your relationship with him. Salvador announces in his next letters that he has arrived at the prison, but the doors are locked. He breaks in, but is unable to find the way up to you. He says that the elevator is inoperable. He also says that, although you are in a prison cell, the building wasn't originally a prison. For whatever reason, it was repurposed by Dr. Money to house you. Salvador then says that the lock to your door is powered by electricity. He comes up with the idea that if he can destroy the generator, it would shut off the power to the building and you would be free to come down to him. However, your conversation is interrupted quickly by a letter from Charlotte. She asks you if you are coming. She says that she is lonely. She can't take it anymore. She can't wait any longer. She apologizes to you. And in her final letter to you, covered in blood, is one last apology. An apology for not knowing whether her letters were even reaching a living soul. Time for grieving is not allowed, however, as Salvador announces that he is at the generator and asks for you, his friend, to come meet him at the entrance. He says he is looking forward to shaking your hand once more. The power to the building flickers off and the emergency light comes on. Your cell door is now unlocked. However, a letter from Dr. Money arrives. Upon opening it, he explains that Salvador, attempting to destroy the generator, although successful, he ended up being electrocuted to death. Dr. Money, despite everything he has done, despite the billions he has killed, then has the audacity to try and convince you to remain in your cell until he can get someone to repair the power. A choice is presented to you. You can either stay in the cell, or you can leave. On this diverging path, the main ending is the one where we leave the cell, and that is precisely what any sane person does. When we exit the cell, we see the closed doors of the rooms that had been here before this place was repurposed into a prison. This place, my guess, used to be a hotel of some sorts. Regardless of what it was, at the end of the hallway, laying on the floor, is an up and down button. Obviously, you pick it up, but you're unsure of what it goes to. Upon going back to your cell and looking around, you'll notice a pair of wires sticking out next to the door. The buttons connect to the wires, and when you hit the down button, the cell door closes and you begin to descend the building. Your cell was the elevator the whole time. The reason why Salvador couldn't reach you was because the buttons had been disconnected. His life was ended prematurely directly because of Dr. Money. When the elevator reaches the ground floor, you exit it and quickly flee the building. However, upon leaving, right across the street from you is Charlotte's Pastry Shop. As you get closer, you can see in the window a singular cake, and peering through the window, behind the counter, is blood. A lot of blood. You enter Charlotte's pastry shop, and behind the counter, instead of a body, is a bloodied letter on a desk. In this final letter, Charlotte is apologizing to you for not being patient enough. She says that she has left her corpse in the back room so that you would not have to look at it. She says that before she passed away, however, she baked one last cake for you and set it up in the windowsill. She wishes you the best of luck and signs off on the letter. In Charlotte's final moments, this wonderful lady was not thinking about herself. She was thinking about you. Though she never met you or officially knew if you existed, she cared about you. She wanted you to not worry about her and for you to remember her. She only wanted you to have hope. Something that Dr. Money had taken from her, that he had taken from the world, all so he could be richer. And that's how this game broke the hearts of millions of players. Its masterfully structured story created a connection with these characters and allowed you to quickly grow close to them. And then, just as quickly as you had formed a bond with them, they were taken away from you. 
and slaughtered all in the name of money. It is true what they say after all. Money is the root of all evil. And with that being said, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let me know down in the comments below. I do read everything y'all type because I love interacting with y'all and listening to everyone's opinions. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you on the flip side.